Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2. In the previous video, we discovered that building a station around Duna may not be the best idea, and so I've created a fresh save, and we are going to try to build it around Lathe. Now, previously I had sent probes to the Joule system, and found that one of the moons of Joule, I forget what it was, Bob or Paul, had the same issue as Duna. But Lathe did not seem to, we were able to get into its SOI, go out of its SOI, and all the orbits seem to look right. So I'm hopeful that Lathe is okay, and we are going to find out. Now, I did import the craft file from the Duna save into this save, so it's a clean save, but uh, the same craft file. I don't expect that the craft file is the problem, but we'll find out, uh, obviously. If we have a problem, we might suspect that now. but. It's the same setup, and this time I'll have to make sure to refuel this thing once we get there, because otherwise it definitely won't be able to come back from the Joule system, because that's a longer way, and we'll see how it goes. So we're going to rename this Lave Station. Okay, well, around here it decided to wiggle a lot. And... We had a structural linkage issue. <laughs> um, hmm, okay. Uh, let me just try revert to launch here. First thing I've brought out to the pad in this save. Well, it's consistent anyway. Out of curiosity, I want to see about using the runway instead. Yeah, I mean, I won't change anything. I just want to see what happens if we shift to the runway. I, I see how it sinks down here? That's a different sort of phenomenon. But... <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. And we don't have any curvals, right? I don't know. Okay. I guess we'll go with this phenomenon. And what we discovered was as long as it's close to zero, we can launch, so... Yeah, I'm just not going to worry about the pad. Uh, somebody thought it was a collider issue with, like, the fins or something, and maybe. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Ah, uh, I should have gone steeper. Okay, alright. Uh, it's just the aerodynamics of this, we need to go steeper for that. Uh, no revert to launch. Okay, now I'll let fall prograde. See how that goes. Well, I'm nudging it a little bit. I'm trying not to do too much. There's the aerodynamic stresses to worry about too. Okay, we have to flatten out now. Going a little bit high on that apoapsis. But pretty good, pretty good. Got pretty far with the SRBs, so... Separation? Okay. 7,000 meters per second to work with. Wish I could just tell it to drain this tank last, that would be more, most convenient. But we don't have that functionality as far as I know. Oh, oh, shoot. Uh, Apoapsis is really high. Whoops. I didn't mean to do it that way. Too focused on getting the solar panels out. We're at the Leif window already, but maybe a little bit past the Duna transfer window. Uh, I sneezed while time warping. Okay, that's an orbit. We'll work with that. Oh no, there's a moon encounter. Well, we have a jewel encounter there. And, but we still have a moon encounter. Now well, it looks like we have some sort of entering SOI here, but it's not showing me that here. When I focus on Jewel. I don't know if I should shift the time on this or not. Um, maybe we can just avoid the moon encounter. Maybe that's what's causing the problem. I think it's still encountering the moon. Yeah, I don't think... If we want this path to be efficient, we don't have any choice. That seems pretty good for now. We'll adjust after we pass the moon, I guess. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, we're burning out of apoapsis, which is least efficient considering how high I left that, but it'll be alright. It's not that much more. Okay, and go. Okay, going with its timing. Oh, come on. Oh boy, we probably overburned there. Okay, we actually see a periapsis now. Uh, well, that's as close as that gets. We'll pass the moon first and then plot some correction. Away from Kerbin. And right by the moon. So far, the moon hasn't had any SOI weirdness, so... No, oh, where's the moon now? Okay, there we go. Flying by the moon. And with Kerbin in the background. Well, we might as well target Leif right now. See if it can help us get into orbit. Okay, that'll be our, corre our correction. In 88 days. Camera is spinning around this a lot more than I'd expect if it was tracking something in particular. It should be like matching the sun angle, right? I don't know what it's matching right now. Okay. Go. We are amazingly enough not catching Leif's interest. So, I'm good. No, wait, what was that? Uh, no, Val is not going to do enough. Oh, wait, there was Ju uh, Lathe, I think. Yeah. Let's see. But that seems really off. Here, it's making orbit for us for free. That's probably high enough to be safe. Okay, well then, uh, if it can capture us into orbit, then we'll get to Apoapsis and then boost up and we'll be fine, I think. Oh, well, I think I should start a little bit early just so I don't have to go full thrust on it. Well, now we have uh, capture here. Good thing I don't have any ignition limit on these engines. Alright, I think we'll just take that for now. Okay, there's the dancing moons. There's Lathe over there. I'm I'm upside down. My camera's upside down over there. I think. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, Lathe is on this side. Okay, so we get really close to Jewel. Not that close. Air braking at Jules, something I haven't tried in this version yet. It's a good question whether that works or not. And if everything was being honest with us, that captures us into orbit around Jewel. And that will verify that at least passing through Lathe orbit like this is correct. Does that mean we're actually crashing on the next pass? That's fancy. But that's not what we're going to do, because that would be a bad way to capture. We see a sending node there, but it doesn't show our descending node over here. Uh, we're really close to it right now. Okay, we'll do this inclination correction first. Okay. Okay. And then boost up. Out of EC? Um, how? Well, still turning, but seriously though. Solar panels. I mean, is it using more solar panels? I mean, we are pretty far out from the sun and everything. Well, I can light that. The engine can provide electric charge. It doesn't seem to care too much about control with electric charge, so... 
I guess, I mean, we our solar panels obviously receive, you know, like 1 25th the normal electric charge that we would receive at Kerbin, but I didn't think it would consume that much. But, or anything at all. These days, it's hard to say, but we do have a lot of lights on, so. Maybe we should turn the lights off or something. Well, that's extra lights, no. Yeah, now it's replenishing electric charge. Maybe during time warp the lights are just too intense or something. Okay, so first a phasing burn to get an encounter. Not exactly the location I wanted, but that'll do. Well, you might as well go full thrust with this. It's a pretty big burn. Okay, let's just get rid of the node and see what's happening. So which way around do we want to go when it comes to lathe? I actually don't know which way around we're going. Uh, which way around were these again? I think it's going clockwise right now. No, wait, I think uh, I, I was reading it backwards, right? I thought this one would be the out one because they're moving outward and this one would be the in one because they're moving inward but it turned out to be backwards right so that means this one is the in one and that one is the out one which means we're going in the right direction oh whatever okay uh i think we'll just uh we'll keep it like this then okay we are now in lathe soi and the amount and we are going the way we want this is uh, this is counterclockwise or prograde so yeah And we'll have a nice circular orbit here. Or circular-ish. Okay, there's Lathan Jewel. Okay, we'll take that. 169 by 121. Alright, well before I forget, then we'll get rid of that node. We are going to transfer to hydrogen. Still have some left over there, but all right. So I will now save. <laughs> Carbon's supposed to be behind Jewel by 48 degrees. Well, we're going to have to sort of exit Lath SOI first. And well, we don't have to exit Lath SOI first, come to think of it. Yeah, I guess. We'll go to tracking station, time warp, until we're in the right location, and then come back to it. Tracking station. Uh, we don't want to focus on the leaf launch because I think that yeah, our time warp is limited if we keep it focused. So we just click curb. Yes. Uh, well, okay, yeah, that didn't work. Fo focus. No, it still doesn't fix the time warp thing. Okay, I'll just hop out and come back. Okay, now we have full time warp. All right. I'm just eyeballing it. That looks good enough to me. Well, it's still here for now. Okay, let me check that the fuel is still in the right place. Yes, okay. All right. Um, let me just use this one and undock. Undock? <gasps> what did we learn? You tell me, game. You tell me. Okay, let me load the save. Uh, so this time we haven't time warped to where we need to transfer yet. Let me uh, reduce the docking acquiring force to zero. We don't need them to dock right now anyway. And then undock. Well, fine. So we're early with the undocking. Uh, that docking acquiring force is a piece of work, I'll tell you. Station appears not to be spinning randomly. This is good. 
Just keeping an eye on it. Okay, well, we want to be in a very different orbit so that we don't, like, collide with the station or anything. So, prograde. It does RCS stuff, but I, I, I'm not able to use RCS. No comnet. Out of range for comnet. Now you're gonna be picky about comnet? Settings. Let me just turn that off. No comnet connection. That's not required now. There is a controller here. It's the same controller that's on the other one. I am going to restart the game. Okay, well now that little icon screen so it says full control. Alright, that's a different orbit. We'll boost it up on the other end. Is it good to time warp around here? Will it hurt the station at all? Well, it didn't seem to. Okay, now I will leave this and go to the tracking station to time warp to the right window. And go back to the space center and come back in so we get the time warp steps. Uh, Lave Station 1 entered Jules SOI. No! It was in a low orbit. Mm, let's take a look at it. It's now in this orbit. It doesn't, the game just doesn't know how to do orbits. Right? Eventually, if it's like this, it's gonna get flung out. What's it even doing there? Exiting SOI. It thinks it was like... Oh, it's already been flung into interplanetary space. Hold on, I'm gonna load the game again. Let me just switch over there. Out of fuel. No, it's not. <laughs> but, um... It has fuel. It's out of engine. But, that's how it was supposed to be. Now, it is a station game. It's supposed to stay here. It's out of fuel. Uh, could you remember that it's out of fuel? Which means it can't go away from here? I'm gonna try not time warping around it. We'll clear it. We won't time warp. Just drift away from it until we are outside of its range, hopefully. I'm gonna assume 2.5 kilometers will do it. So I'll time warp now. Okay, the two are in distinct orbits. Try going to the tracking station. We'll save first. Okay, well, it said lost control. Okay, well, lost control is fine. I don't believe it, but it's fine. No new orbits, though. I think I'll just time warp at this. It's a little bit tedious, but it's manageable. The last time warp step might be critical. Okay, we haven't had any untoward orbit situations here. Maybe it's the high time warp, or maybe it's time warping in close proximity, but let's proceed with bringing our vessel back. Our tug, if you will. Named default name 2. Okay, so now what we want to do, if we want to come back directly out of Leith SOI, is to get Leith over here. If Jules' own orbit is 12 o'clock, we want Leith at like 11 ish. Maybe that'll be good. And then, of course, to get out of Leith SOI, we'll have to. We can boost up or down, but we want to boost up. For the eventual escape, so. And so that puts us in uh, exit trajectory directly. But it's sort of lopsided. Well, we'll probably need a mid-course adjustment anyway. Let's see. Let's say we have a maneuver there. Correct the inclination. Well, that's pretty far off considering I thought we were at the right window. I think this whole business of trying to go straight out of Lathis may be a little bit too ambitious. Oh great, we've got an extra Tylo encounter interfering. And as long as we avoid that Tylo encounter, we can get pretty close here. 
I think we should just do a radial burn to nail that. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll make further adjustments, but that seems really high for a uh, urban entering SOI thing. But it's okay. Um, so we do one burn out from Leith, and that'll automatically eject us out from Jewel like this into an orbit that has uh, entering SOI for Kerbin. So 1,118. However, uh, it's not automatic. We have a make course adjustment, and I have no idea how much that costs because we don't get to see that around here as far as I know. If you know how to see that, tell me. It, you know, in case we won, we'd hover over it and see how much delta V it is, but we can't do that. That would be a good addition. But our main concern, of course, is that our station stays stationary. And we will be going full time more trying to get back home. I don't have that kind of patience to wait multiple Kerbin years otherwise, so we'll see. Go. It's not showing the Delta V. That's not friendly of it. Why is it not showing the Delta V tick down? Oh, because we've got another node, right, because we have another node afterwards. Well, I'll just try and match the outward bound trajectory and the timing. It's not exactly a match. This was pretty sensitive. Pay attention to our little station there. Okay, it is still there. It's not showing me my curve in ascending or descending node right now. That seems wrong. What just happened? I just made a node here. It's a zero delta V node. And it somehow changed my orbit from that one to this one. Now it's not. And now a descending and descending node do make sense. Oh boy. <laughs> That's a lot. Well, we don't want to do that. You know what? Uh, let's just have it wait instead of trying to do that at all. We'll just go out and we're going to go to Apoapsis. Okay, we have an encounter with Kerbin there. So, we just need to do this 1042 meter per second burn. Once we go all the way around Kerbal up to our Apoapsis. It's going to take a long time to build this station. Which also means a lot of time warping. Okay, the station seems to still be around Lathe, but we uh, we don't have the same orbit at all coming out of Jewel. So Jewel does that thing because this is not the same orbit that we had plotted on because that wouldn't make any sense. Um, right, maybe I, maybe I missed something there. Maybe it wasn't Jewel's fault. I don't want to blame Jewel. Okay, I think we'll just do a pure inclination burn there. It's costly though, 442. I don't know if we're going to end up with enough delta V to capture. It's not really showing this right now. It's not tracking my delta V. I don't think I have another node, so I don't know why, but... Okay, well, I'm just gonna... Well, wait a second. Oh no, this is not a pure... Inclination change, it's more complicated than that. We're bringing the periapsis down as well. Oh, wait, so much for. Oh, it started turning even though I've got it on stability on. Why? Why did you do that? Okay, we have a. Uh, encounter point there. Okay, so over here we're going to pull our orbit down so that we eventually get an encounter. That's not too bad. That's uh, close enough to the planet that there ought to be one. 
So we'll just take that for now. Nope. I'm CSing it. Alright, that'll be good enough, I think. I don't know why it's not showing me an encounter, but alright. Time warping. It's certainly the long way around here. Something about our initial timing. Uh, trying to do a single burn out of Leaf in order to get back was touchy. Is 1,400 going to be enough to capture, though? Okay, first radial in. Well, let's keep it safe like that. And it looks like we're going the right way around. And most, uh, not equatorial. Um, not equatorial at all. Uh, let's try and fix that. I don't know if we have enough. We should have already done that. Uh, no. Okay, now I'll take that periapsis. Let's go. We'll find out whether we can capture on the fly. We'll get to periapsis and see. Uh, well, it'll be a loose orbit once again. 4,000 meters per second and we subtract out that much. It'll be a capture. Oh, wait, uh, it's going all over the place. Come on, SAS, help me out here. Uh, this is not supposed to be imbalanced right now. We have captured. And we'll just expend this. Okay. Our CS off as well. Alright, so that's the orbit we're in. At least it's mostly equatorial. Pretty good. And will be easy to get to. We can refuel it. Now... Tracking station. Take a look at our station. Focus. Well, it's still around Leif, apparently. Control. Okay, it didn't blow up when we turned to it. So far, so good. It's the same orbit. It's the same orbit. So time warping in its midst was the problem, I think. I think that was it. Uh, because we time warped when we were close to it, it then glitched out. And maybe that was true of the Duna one as well. Though Duna also has the problem with the backwards uh, exits out of the SOI. So, yeah. We are going to save it here and see if we can continue this life station. Who knows? But, yeah. Uh, it's uh, It's got promise. We'll have to adjust the Delta V on our uh, tug. But, yeah. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.